So if you're going out to buy a car, what things should you be looking out for? What should be on your checklist of things to just go over and review before you actually commit to the purchase of the car? I've bought lots of cars over the years and I've been thoroughly ripped off in some cases. And in some cases I've done extremely well and ended up with a really good car. So here is a list of 10 things to look out for when buying a car. If you follow through this 10 point checklist, it's unlikely that you will end up buying a car that proves to be a lemon. So the first obvious thing is to check the exterior condition of the car. So you're looking for signs of accident damage primarily. So if you look at the panel joins at the top and the bottom, there should be an equal gap in both areas and both regions. If for example the bottom gap is much closer than the top gap, chances are that car has had some kind of impact and that's caused the panels to be slightly misaligned. So when they repair cars they often don't have an attention to detail to that degree so they'll fix the dented panels and maybe replace the bumper but if there's a slight misalignment between the panels that'll often get overlooked so that is an obvious red flag. You can also see if there's been signs of repair on the car so if there's areas of overspray in the engine bay or in other areas of the car or if the seams look to be a slightly different color if you check the panels from different angles in different light conditions you'll actually generally see if there's been any evidence of a change in the paint looking underneath the car you'll obviously see weld marks where panels have been welded on or things have been repaired or joined and sometimes the exterior panels of the car look quite straight but when you get underneath and start to look at the actual structural chassis you'll actually see that it's slightly twisted out of shape so if you are buying a car with that sort of extent of damage I would certainly walk away and avoid that. But other than that, just check the general condition of the car. Is the paint in good order? Is it scratched? Has the paint started to degrade? Are there signs of accident damage? And if a scratch will cost you 200 to repair, get that knocked off the price. So tires, obviously check the tires are in good condition. So you're looking for signs of damage on the tires, particularly on the edges of the tires, where they tend to be somewhat thinner and they often come into contact with curbs. But also check the tread depth across the entire tire. If the signs of uneven tire wear, that could indicate there is some problem with the suspension setup or maybe that the car has just been driven really really hard so you're looking for uniformity across the tread pattern generally if it is worn on just the outside edges or just the inside edges that's often down to bad maintenance of tire pressures so too high a pressure will cause wear on the center part because the tire will effectively just bead and bulge and if the tire pressure is too low the wear will typically be on the outside where the inner part has started to effectively sag and all of the pressure is on that outside edge of the tire. So brakes, check the rotors, the brake discs, the brake pads, all the aspects of the braking system and just check that there's no serious signs of damage, scoring, cracking or warping in those components and that there's sufficient pad life left. When you actually test drive the car it's certainly worth checking that the brakes aren't pulling off to one direction when you try and do an emergency stop. So suspension can be quite expensive to repair. So just check that the suspension is good all around the car. Now you should see the car bounce down as you depress it and then it should level itself quite quickly. If there's an element of oscillation there, that can indicate that parts of the suspension system have become worn and will probably need replacing. And in some areas, that sort of thing will often fail the annual inspection. So you'll need to get that fixed anyway. And again, that's something you can negotiate down on the price. So the engine is the most important aspect of the car. So check for oil leaks, leaks of exhaust gases, any types of fluid leaks. If you look under the car, if it's been standing there for some time, you shouldn't see any fresh patches of fluid coming off the engine. And the actual engine itself shouldn't have any wet spots to indicate that there is some kind of seepage. When you start the car up, you should also be looking for abnormal smoke coming from the exhaust. So a little bit of smoke on startup is expected on a lot of cars. But if it's still starting to smoke after the engine has warmed up, you've clearly got some kind of problem there. If that smoke is white, it often indicates there's excess moisture getting into the engine. So that could be a head gasket starting to go, seeping a little bit of coolant into the engine. It could be burning oil, which gives off a blue hue to the smoke. So you really don't want to be buying an engine where the exhaust is extensively blue. And check the engine for unusual noises. So you're listening out for rattles and whining noises and other noises from the engine. And the location of the noise can actually indicate where the 
problem is. So is it at the top of the engine? Is it at the bottom? Is it where the cam belt or the cam chain tensioner is? So they can often be weak spots in cars leading to fairly expensive repairs if they're not addressed. So you expect the engine response to be fairly smooth when you actually drive it, but you should certainly check that it's delivering the power as it should, that there's no flat spots. Try different gears and different loads on the engine. So low RPM, high RPMs, a little bit of hills if you can find a hill to go up and down and try that in slightly too high a gear and slightly too low a gear just to see how the engine copes. That will often stress the engine enough to show up any weak spots or potential problems in your purchase. So again the transmission, particularly if it's an automatic, just check that the shift is quite smooth. You're not getting any kind of judder from the transmission as it changes gear. There's no transmission whine going on or unusual noises coming from the transmission. And again listen out for it in different gears. Sometimes it's just one specific gear that might tend to whine and it might only do that at certain RPM levels. So on that test drive it really is vital to try different RPM speeds, different road speeds as well and really get a feel for the engine. So avoid the very short test drive. You really want to be driving a car for about 10 to 15 minutes in my humble opinion to, to form an accurate impression of the condition of the car, its engine and its transmission. So electrical systems you just need to check that all the lights are working. The, the nightmare you have is if you buy a car that's got some kind of electrical problem. Now these can be notoriously difficult to check out and diagnose. You really need someone else to check the lights are all operational, the indicators, turn signals, the, the brake lights, the reversing lights and the different types of light you've got for fog and low and high beam and just make sure that they're all working correctly. So if there's any weird warning lights coming up on the dashboard or any glitches or sudden dips in the lighting in certain conditions when you're driving it, you should suspect that there is some kind of electrical problem there and again that can be quite expensive to track down and repair. So do a quick fluid check as well, check the brake fluid, the coolant levels, even the washer bottle and the oil level. They can all tell you if the car has been maintained so if those fluid levels are seriously out then the owner's not really keeping on top of the regular routine servicing. So you've got to question whether you would want to buy a car that's not been particularly well looked after. Checking the oil if it's really thick, black and sludgy that would probably indicate that the oil has not been changed for some time. So again in my opinion that is a walk away and don't engage with that seller any further. If the coolant level has dropped that's quite unusual in a car so that will often indicate there is some kind of problem within the cooling system. Potentially a leak you might need to get the radiator, the hoses or it could even be the head gasket that's starting to leak but that was the thing where you look out for the white smoke in the exhaust. So all the fluid levels should be where you expect. Certainly chat with them about their service habits. Do they check the tyre pressures regularly? Do they check the fluid levels? Just mention that in conversation and get a feel for the owner. Have they looked after this car or have they really run it into the ground and you're just buying someone else's neglect that you're going to need to spend a lot of money fixing up? And finally, this is for me one of the most important things when buying a car is to check it has a full service history. Now, whether it's taken to the main dealer or to a reputable local garage or even if the guy's done it himself, I don't mind too much as long as they used the correct components and there's evidence there that it's been done at the correct interval. So if they're missing services or if they're using the wrong grade of oil or they can't provide receipts to back up the statements that they've serviced the car or in some cases people say a car's been regularly serviced every year and all they've done is change the oil. It's still on its original plugs and none of the other components of the engine have ever been serviced or changed. So walk away from that. If the car is only a few years old I would expect a full main dealer service history. If people aren't taking it back to the main dealer while it's fairly new. That indicates to me a, an attitude of neglect or cheapness on the part of the owner. Now I know dealers do charge a lot of money but it really is worth it especially when the car is new to maintain the value of the car. When you come to sell it you will generally get a better price if people know it's been looked after by the main dealer and that's because the main dealer has a whole series of checks that they have to go through to ensure that the car is kept up to spec and often it's under warranty you've often got some kind of service contract with the dealer so the actual cost is actually already covered by insurance so the dealer is effectively looking for work to do on the car. So that's my 10 things to look out for when buying a car. If you've got your own things please drop them in the comments. If I've missed any off um, you'll probably help me out when I go out and buy my next car. Thanks for watching. Please boot that like button because that really helps us to get out there. We're only a very very small channel so we really do appreciate your comments, your likes and all of your words of encouragement. It is appreciated. Thanks for watching. If you haven't subscribed please do so. We'd love you to stay tuned and I'll see you in the next video that we've got lined up for you.